you don't know how you're gonna, uh, yeah, I cope. I mean, I'm pretty self-sufficient. Do you know what I mean? Well, I have to, I have, I have to be now because I have to do everything, basically, the shopping and the washing and all, all those things. But, so that'll be all right. That side of it is all right, it's just up here. Now I'm gonna cope with that. Well, I had a friend, a school friend of mine, who got married and moved to North Wales. Mo had a cottage in North Wales, which her husband, her first husband had bought. And uh, we just met up there. Simple as that, really. I say, John is 35, our son's 35. We must have been together at least five years before that. So it's got to be 40 years. As her dad said, you get less for murder. Well, we suspected when she found the lump that it was going to be cancerous. Um, so went to the doctor and he referred her to Hereford, to the Renton unit there. And they had a look at it and said, yeah, it was cancerous, but it was only very small and they could do surgery on it and remove it, which they did. And then she had four weeks of radiotherapy. We had to go to Hereford every day, which is a bit of a pain, but, and then it, it was all fine. She took the, having the drugs and everything was all fine until she found the next two lumps, which weren't too clever. So, ah, a few tears, obviously. Um, but the help, the Macmillan Renton unit in Hereford is brilliant. And they were really supportive. And uh, we just came to terms with it, really. And once you'd had the lump removed and, she, and was taking the pills, it was just like, it never happened. Basically, we just got on with our lives again. Well, because this time it's two different tumours on the other side. And all they can offer is a double mastectomy, which he doesn't want, obviously. Um, so it's like terminal, basically. <laughs> which is difficult to come to terms with, but you just have to. I get a bit tearful sometimes. But I don't show it. I try not to show it to Mo, because that ain't going to do any good at all. I don't really know how to put it, really. I mean, my, I've got to look after her. So that's my, that's what I do. And I can't see putting any, I don't want to put any more burden on her than she's already got. So I just keep it inside me. I, don't, I can't see there's any alternative, really. What matters most to me? I can do all I can to keep her happy, really. If she's happy, then I'm okay. I just don't want her worrying. Because we, I think, did she mention about John, our son? You can tell him something one day and he's forgotten about it the next. So I guess he probably is aware, but I don't think he, and he hasn't actually taken it fully on board, I don't think, because he's got so many other things going on in his life. That's the right pain. Because there's nothing I can do about that as much as I'd like to go down there and sort it all out. I can't physically do it. So, hopefully that'll get sorted out in the next couple of weeks anyway, so that'll make life a lot easier. She's happy, I'm happy, I guess that's the way it works. Yeah, it is, I mean, it is, that is the way it works, actually. It's difficult to propel yourself for because you don't know how you're going to feel. I'm going to be well pissed off, obviously, and unhappy, because that's inevitable after 40 years. And how I cope with it, I do not know. Well, we shall see. I've got my garden, <laughs> yeah, but I've got this, did Mo say that I've got this COPD thing? Which is a right, you know, it's own stupid fault for smoking for 50 years. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> but I enjoyed it. <laughs> uh, so that slows me down a lot. I have to watch how I go. Which is a bit of a nuisance sometimes, because I get breathless really quickly. Which I haven't been, which I'm not used to, because as I say, I used to play a lot of sport. And I always considered myself pretty fit for my age. And now I realise I'm not. <laughs> oh, we have a laugh. We still have a, we've always had a laugh. We still have a laugh. I mean, I really wanted to be a stand up comedian, so. <laughs> but I like a laugh. I've always liked to laugh. You know what I mean? I can't take things too seriously, because it's, it's just not worth it. It just gets you down. I think it's the only thing that gets us through sometimes. You know, the situation with John being the way it is, 
If, that could really get you down. But you can't dwell on it. It's just not worth it because worrying doesn't do any good at all. I don't see many couples who have been together how long, going out hand in hand. Do you know what I mean? I don't see any of the couples in our close. They never hold hands. You never see them holding hands. You think, well, that's bizarre. <laughs> you know, it's just weird. Yeah, I mean, we've both been married before, so we knew what we were looking for, and we found it. Simple as that. See, every relationship is different, and everybody's different. I think you've just got to try. I mean, there are places like the Bracken Trust who can help you. So when you're in my shoes, you've got someone to turn to. who have got experience of these things. I couldn't really give anybody any advice because it's not my place, <laughs> to be honest with you. If they, ask my, if they ask for help, yeah, I'm sure I'd give it. But I wouldn't just come out and say, oh, you should do this, you should do that. Because, no, I wouldn't like anybody to say that to me. So I certainly wouldn't say it to anybody else.